Welcome back to the Historic Happy Hour, the Historic America segment where we explore the liquid spirits that fueled the greatest icons and legends in American history. Today we'll be exploring the favorite cocktail of one of America's most iconic presidents, Lyndon Johnson. Hello, Lyndon. Well, hello, Lyndon. It's just great to have you there where you belong. Lyndon Johnson was a larger-than-life American figure. His personality and his policy redefined the American presidency and left an indelible mark on American politics and culture. Though his presidency and his life are certainly memorable, they're often viewed through checkered lenses. Historians and you sitting at home might remember and give him credit for the Great Society domestic agenda, which opened up with the iconic 1964 Civil Rights Act. But where Johnson only falls into the mud is the war in Vietnam. The 1964 Gulf of Tonkin incident and the congressional resolution that shares its name expanded America's involvement in the Vietnam War and the war it was destined to lose. Johnson is often mired down by his involvement in the 64 resolution and his involvement in expanding America's presence in Vietnam. Beyond being a master politician and lifelong public servant, Lyndon Johnson was also a man who loved his food and drink. A proud Texan, he frequently enjoyed barbecue at the LBJ Ranch. However, his favorite meal was chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes, especially the one prepared by his famous cook, Zephyr Wright. He usually washed down the chicken fried steak with a can of Fresca, even having a button installed in the Oval Office to bring him Fresca. Though these stories are something of legend and something we'd love to talk about more with you, stories of Zephyrite, chicken fried steak, and fresco will have to be saved for another day, because today we're talking about Lyndon Johnson's favorite cocktail, the Scotch and Soda. But if we're going to talk about LBJ, I'd better change to something a little more appropriate. Excuse me. That's better, don't you think? Where were we? The Scotch and Soda. The Scotch and Soda, beyond being the name of the cocktail, is also a list of its ingredients. So all you need is scotch, soda water, and ice, if you're into that. And so, you may be thinking, why such a bland drink for such a colorful character? It's true, the Scotch and Soda is only three ingredients. It doesn't have a remarkable coalition of flavors. But certainly, if you give me a chance right now to tell you this story, you'll see why this drink is so appropriate for Johnson. Not because of what the drink is itself, but the way he enjoyed it. And this story comes to us courtesy of Johnson's former special assistant, Joseph A. Califano Jr. So, I want you to do a little imagining with me. Pretend it's the 1960s, let's say 1966. You're a Secret Service agent, and President Johnson has decided, I want to go back to the ranch for me, which he frequently did. And so Johnson gets up one morning, and he says, in his strong Texas accent, well, I'm going to go take the car for a ride. And so that's what he does. You can't argue with Lyndon Johnson. So Johnson gets in his trademark white Lincoln Continental convertible, and he takes off down the road. Now, you being a Secret Service agent, you don't ride the car. Special Assistant Califano's in the car with Johnson, but you ride in the trailing station wagon. So you're riding in the station wagon, and suddenly, Johnson slows down. He doesn't stop, he slows down. He sticks his hand out the car and shakes his cup with ice. Well, what does that mean? If you're on the Lyndon Johnson Secret Service staff, you know exactly what that means. That means the president is out of a drink and he wants another one. So Johnson keeps on moving slowly. He never stops. He keeps driving. And so now it's your job to get to Johnson and get him his drink. So what does the Secret Service agent do? What do you do? You get out of the car. You jog over to Johnson's car, who hasn't stopped. He has not stopped. He's moving slowly, but he has not stopped. You grab his cup, run back to the station wagon, hand the cup to another Secret Service agent, and the Secret Service agent begins to fill that cup with scotch, soda, ice, gives it back to you, and you have to run back to Johnson and give him this cup. 
And so you've given Johnson the cup, and he's now taken off down the road, and you have to get back to the station wagon and catch up to Johnson. And Johnson typically did this three or four times on a single ride around the ranch. So imagine, it's a hot Texas day, and you're ping-ponging back and forth between Johnson's car and the Secret Service station wagon. I hope that story proves to you that though this cocktail may be simple, it certainly wasn't enjoyed in a simple way by Johnson. It was enjoyed in that signature, larger-than-life, eccentric way that Johnson was famous for. And so, how does Johnson take his scotch and soda? Now, the way Johnson takes his scotch and soda is very reflective of his early childhood. Johnson grew up in the hill country of Texas, experiencing rural poverty his entire life. So, did he enjoy it in a fancy glass? No. He typically enjoyed it in a plastic or foam cup, similar to this one. Now, if you want to be a Lyndon Johnson purist and make it the way the man made it, that is perfectly okay. And it's perfectly all right to use that plastic or foam cup. Now, Johnson really, really loved Cutty Sark Scotch. Cutty Sark Scotch is arguably the Scotch of the mid-century, and Johnson was no exception to that rule. He loved Cutty Sark. It wasn't super duper expensive. It was the man Scotch, if you will, the common man Scotch. And so Johnson loved that Cutty Sark Scotch. So a typical Lyndon Johnson Scotch and Soda is going to be enjoyed in a plastic or foam cup with Cutty Sark Scotch. Now you could do it that way. We certainly wouldn't blame you. That is probably the more authentic way to do it. But here in historic America, we're not satisfied with possibly doing it the simple way. This would be the typical Lyndon Johnson Texas Ranch version of the Scotch and Soda. Now, let's think about doing the Lyndon Johnson Scotch and Soda, but at the White House. If you'll excuse me one more time, I'll grab what we'll need. As you can see, we've got some upgrades since you've been gone. We've replaced our plastic cup with an actual glass, our simple bottle of Cutty Sark with a Scotch decanter, and we have this space age looking item here that I'll get to in a moment. So everything you see before me, with the exception of this table and what I'm wearing, is original to the 1960s. These are quite possibly things that are similar to what Johnson used in the White House and on the ranch. So we've got our Scotch decanter, we've got our 1960s glass, and we've got this thing. Now, what is this thing? This is an authentic 1960s soda siphon. If you don't believe me, here's the box it came in. Um, and how did Historic America get this? Through our secret contacts in the historic black market, also known as eBay. You can find one on eBay that's been unopened, that is in perfect condition. We found one, so you too can find one. But if you want to use the regular soda that you buy at the store, that is A-OK. -okay. Here at Historic America, we're a bit of sticklers for accuracy. So if we can find a way to make it work, we're going to try our best to make it work. So how does this soda siphon work? Uh, so it uses these carbon dioxide capsules, which you can still buy today. And so you put it in this little apparatus here. And so you make sure it's nice and snug. Um, and then you place it on the bottom here. There's, there's a hole here on the bottom. And then you just twist. You twist, you twist, and then uh, simultaneously, you shake. Um, and it's, it's the, the, the bottom and the bottle itself are gonna get a little cold. Um, but it's worth it, trust me. Um, and you might get a little water on yourself, but that's part of the fun. Um, and so, when it's been carbonated, you take it out. And right in here, you've got about a quart of the best soda you will ever have in your life. Again, you can buy the soda at the store. It's going to still taste pretty good. But there's nothing that beats the authentic mid-century way of making soda. So let's get down to the recipe itself. Again, as we explained before, the recipe is super duper simple. You're gonna start with two ounces of scotch. So there's one. There's two. 
And depending on how strong you want your scotch, you're going to finish with one to six ounces of soda. I like to think Johnson was someone who didn't take a lot of soda. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there. It's okay if you make a mess. Making a mess is half the fun. And there you have it. The Lyndon Johnson Scotch and Soda. It's not a super potent drink. It's something you can have and easily sip and enjoy. Um, it's perfect for a hot Texas day, as you might imagine might be appropriate to Johnson. So now that you've got your LBJ Scotch and Soda, what are you gonna do? You could watch a movie about LBJ. You could catch up with your favorite LBJ biography. Or, if you're anything like me, you can have an LBJ themed dance party. Take it away, boys.